in Greater Britain, in the peace of the Lord Jesus. I remember that uh, I went to give a class in uh, Mene, and right after the people like this, Marcelo, Daniel, and there was a pastor that was very spiritual, that said, as I was going up, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but I, I want to wanna cry. So if you want to cry, you already cry in a class of Marcelo. In my class, you're not going to cry. Very good. Very well. So you've seen and you learned for about a time called soon. And in order for you to understand better, with, with greater depth, and this teaching about the time called soon, because it's inside of the doctrine initially, we're going to speak about doctrine. The youth like uh, to s uh, a lot of ac academic topics. What is doctrine? I remember a woman came to my clinic and she asked uh, two women, are you from Arnatha? Yes, I am. And she said, oh, you're from Arnatha. I like Arnatha very much. It's a very good church, but it's a church that has very little doctrine. Uh, oh, okay. Little doctrine, okay. In her mind, doctrine was uses and cosmos. You, know, you already know about long hair, long dress, and this kind of stuff. But what is doctrine? Doctrine, we're speaking about doctrine of the church. You're going to see doctrine of the, the law, and doctrine of whoever studies the law. No, no, I'm talking about the doctrine of the church. What is the doctrine of the church? What is the concept? Doctrine of the church is a group of elements that emerge from the word through the operation of the Holy Spirit in the body. Did you memorize or repeat? The doctrine of the church is a group of elements why do I say it's a group of elements? If I take, for example, salvation. If you take so the doctrine of salvation. Inside of the doctrine of salvation, there are many elements. For example, act, process, in sanctification. Right? So those are elements of, of a single doctrine, which is salvation. So if I speak also about doctrine of the salvation, uh, the rapture of the church. So there are a group of elements there are in the word. So doctrine is a group of elements that came from where? Come from the word of the Lord through the operation of what? Human reason? Human reason? No. It, it, it comes through revelation. What? Re exactly. Revelation. So it's a group of elements that emerge from the word through the operation of the Holy Spirit. It's called re, re revelation, right? In what? In the mind of who? Is in the mind of a, a one person only? Is the mind of a, one pastor only? No. It's in the body. Do you understand? Now everybody knows. So let's go. The doctrine is a group of elements that emerge from the word through the operation of the Holy Spirit in the body. Everybody learned this, right? Very well. So this doctrine, that you already know what it is, it has an origin. Where does it have an origin? I'm talking 1968. In February was the first. January was 23 of January. So the origin of the doctrine was in the church of Taka, and uh, born of the Spirit Santo, the origin is in this church called Toka. No, no. You see in the Sunday schools, and who is going to Sunday schools are getting better than pastors. I'm very afraid of youth that goes always to Sunday schools. I'm very afraid of them because they know more than us. And I'll tell you more. These youth of Sunday schools they will all be pastors. And the women are going to be all wives of pastors. 
But who doesn't come? It's, it's a right to. So the doctrine was born where? What was the origin? And so, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. So this doctrine of the apostles is born where? We only have 20 minutes. So it was born here in Ephesus, the church of Ephesus. So the doctrine of the church was born where? It was born in the church of Ephesus. You're studying Sunday school, the first church. That's why the enemy tried to do what? It attempted to make an opposition in the beginning of the doctrine. So the doctrine that you live today is born where? In the church of Ephesus. That's why there was an opposition of the enemy. Why? Because what the enemy wanted to do here, he wanted to put human reason, human reason, right? And what was human reason? Was to do what? To make opposition to? To what? Opposition to? This, something is missing here. Oppos the reason to make opposition to? To the re revelation. That's why Paul that speaks about this doctrine. His, his first letter, he says, if all the gospel is proclaimed, that is not this one, may, may be um, disregarded. So this doctrine it attempts to be destroyed in Smyrna. And the church is killed. Well, the church was dying. The, the weight was being so the doctrine was being generated and now the church the attempt of the of killing the church and now in Pergamon is the mustard seed that is sown and then a big tree was, was sprouted up so the faith was which was invisible became the visible faith so the doctrine is finished in the primitive church it, which is born here and they try to kill it here and here it is defaced so then it enters in the church of Tiatira in the picture of the woman which is Jezebel so then chose in three measures of uh, leaven in the three measures of wheat it chose the, the leaven so that's the origin of the doctrine very well so what church so you study on the Sunday school what is which one is our church today the church we're living what is it called? Lord is say very well. So one of the topics interesting in the church of Lord is is I'm at the door and I knock. So if someone hears, I'll enter, right? So what does it mean? We are to church of Lord say So in nineteen sixty eight when this church began, when Maranatha began, what happened to us? The Holy Spirit knocked at our door and brought this doctrine it already existed but what did God do in order for you to understand so that you can discuss with amongst yourself and not have doubts so the Lord brought this doctrine it already existed it existed from the church of Ephesus but it entered into our hearts why because the Lord wanted to change our understanding he wanted to perfect our understanding regarding the doctrine. Well, the traditional Christians, they use an argument. It's very interesting. You see, if you want to discuss with a traditional Christian, I remember a, a, a friend, a pastor that used to say the following, soccer politics and religion you don't discuss it always ends up in a fight but you have to give your witness if somebody asks you and says why are you Pentecostal and the other Christian is not Pentecostal because the non-Pentecostal Christian believes that the doctrine it, it came here they agree that the doctrine was born in the first century and he says the following the spiritual gifts were only for the first century why? Because they were they were creating the canon or the New Testament, it was it was being prepared. So the Holy Spirit used 
the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the war that was being generated in the Church of Ephesus. That's why this operation is, is finished in the first century. So they use that text from Paul that says the following. They were uh, having signs, they will cease, because in part we know and in part we prophesy what we see is perfect, it will be annihilated. When they close the canon of the, the New Testament, what is in part is annihilated. It ceased here because what came is perfect. So when it comes to perfect, they allege that this is the canon. When we know that it's not, the perfect is the second coming of Jesus, as Marcello said in the past. So, see, this condition that happened here when the Lord called us, the Lord began to bring us to understand the doctrine that was here which was through a relation. That's why Paul said the following. The gospel that I proclaimed, I didn't learn from man, but was by revelation. So here, revelation, that's what happened to us. And what the Lord began to speak to us about the doctrine was the following. The Lord began to show to us very interesting things. So if you look exactly how what Paul preached, you see that in Acts 19, what did he preach? He preached about what? The difference of, of baptism in the water and baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts 19. And then he speaks in a very clear way about the spiritual gift and the ministry and the body. He makes all those explanations. But at the close of the century, in the first century, when also the, the doctrine is finished, which is the book of Revelations, the doctrine of the book of Revelation is, it closes in one thing that we learn this year as the theme, which is the close in the first century of the doctrine, which is fundamental for you. It's fundamental. If you leave this place and say, I didn't understand anything that Amado said, I just learned one thing. I only understood that the closing of the doctrine is summarized in they overcame through the blood and through the word. If you understand this, why? Because you are youth, right? We are all youth. They are, they are old, but we are youth. So for us, when John, so now take the fourth and fifth measure. Everybody knows about the fifth measure, but the fifth measure is was the physicist, that man, Lawrence. He said, as an observatory, and he said, when see two points, the speed of light. So in the time called now. So then, the speed of light, the time is now. So when John sees the church, he sees on the time called now, in a single time. So when John sees the church, he sees the church in a single time, including the rapture church, when the church arrives in eternity. You, 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 in eternity, rejoice and glorify in the name of the Lord. And you say, how the youth in the 21st century how did they overcome? How did they overcome the world, human reason, philosophy, your arguments, the concepts, the ideas? How did they overcome this? There in the past they said they overcame through the blood and through the word. So look at this, which is the closing of the doctrine here. So when we had the experience of knowing the learning doctrine of the primitive church the first thing that the Lord made us understand even even in a very simplistic way it was very emblematic so it was a pleading for the blood of Jesus and many didn't understand how it was they did some thought it was a mysticism blood blood but I'm afraid of blood I'm scared of blood but and the, the blood and the word. From uh, this beginning, the doctrine uh, flourished as a whole. Why? 
Why? Because if I had the blood and the word, what is there in Revelations? And he was robed in garments that was sprinkled with blood, and his name by which he is called is the word. So the blood and word is Jesus. Is it perfect doctrine that has its origin here? So we, when we begin to understand the doctrine of this work of the Holy Spirit, we begin to understand the, the blood and the word. And from that point, everything flourished. Why? Because the operation of the Spirit in the word. So was the word? And the living word. The word of life is there, but there was a living word. So it began to bring a, a, a new knowledge. So to see, today you're here and you say, Jesus is coming. Oh, Marcelo, just preach about the knowledge of the time called soon. Why do you say that Jesus is coming? Because of the doctrine. Because the doctrine, the revealed doctrine, it, when it's revealed, what does it do? It generates in the, the true church and the faithful church. It placed the faithful church in the prophetic time, which is in the Word. They only can only understand the prophetic time, which is in the Word, is the faithful church, which has this doctrine. Outside of this, what is it preaching? Jesus uh, is for this human, this uh, our life. Jesus that cures. Jesus that brings prosperity. We're not going to even go to the other topics because it's only in 20 minutes. The doctrine be is born in Jerusalem, the primitive primitive church. Not only in Jerusalem. It was not only in Jerusalem because Antiochia, Paul from there was the, the primitive church, the church of the first century was born there. The doctrine was born there. It's here. The first three measures are here. And then and all the situation starts in Tiatira. But the great problem today, you, youth, is not to allow that the opposition that was made here to the doctrine of the first century, because the spirit that moved in the first century in the opposition is moving today in this area. And you cannot allow this. You cannot allow this. Because the spirit, uh, the evil spirit that acted here as an opposition will act today to remove it from the revelation and put you in human reason. So you may say, oh, it's like this. I think it's like that. I think that youth can get mixed up with the world. It's not so, so bad. We can uh, go to carnival uh, as long as you don't drink beer. No, you can go to uh, uh, dance clubs as long as you don't drink anything alcoholic. So this concept uh, that bring the gospel, like Marcelo said before, in this whole situation is a concept of the opposition that, that the enemy, enemy made in Ephesus and tries to do this today in the Church of Allah, said because it's the Church of the Rapture. And how will you overcome this? You have the Word and you have the blood. So you open the Word and the Lord speaks with you. The, the Lord reveals. What is this then? You know the Lord, the Word and Word will set you free. And they overcome through the blood and the Word. So if you leave this place with this, this understanding of the theme of this year, very well. So from this point forward, everything will continue. The Word, the blood and the Word, your, your dating, the preparation of your marriage, blood and the Word, the family is not working, your professional life, blood and the Word, the college, all of this, this dynamics of the doctrine of here in your life today, and the Lord says, because the opposition will continue, but you will overcome, and we will arrive in eternity, we will say, I overcame. Amen?
Amen. Begin our next class. After this class, we have a break for those that want to. It's going to be a quick class in 20, 25 minutes.